Hello and welcome to Geordie Leather. Now today's episode is a bit different because normally I sit here going on about leather work and materials and tools and all that sort of stuff which you seem to like but today I'm going to answer a question. I'm getting a bit tired of actually being asked so I thought I'd better do something about it. You know I sit here and I talk about this stuff but the most frequently asked question I get is where can I get one of these? Your drawer cabinet, I love it, I want one. Can I buy one? Will you make me one? Well, the simple answer is, I did make it myself. It's very simple, and in today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make it yourself. But before we get on to that, um, quickly to say that the March 21 winner of the giveaway competition was Phil from the UK, so congratulations, Phil. I see you've already used your gift token, so those goods to be on the way to you very, very soon. Uh, the April 21 competition is now open and feel free to head across to geordieleather.com and enter the competition, it's completely free. So, the cabinet. I keep telling people this is basically a box with some runners in, but they seem to want me to make a video. So, I'm gonna show you a bit of a close-up so you can see exactly what it is. So I'll zoom in, let's have a look. So you can see it's basically a rectangle of MDF, four bits of MDF screwed together. It's quite crude, it's not particularly high quality furniture. You can actually see the saw edge marks. So I just knocked it together very quickly, but I've had it for a long time and it, it serves the purpose really well. As you know, I just store my, my rivets, snap fasteners, all sorts of hardware in there and it just, it's very accessible, it's just within easy arm's reach, the drawers slide in and out, it's very useful, but it's also very simple. So there's no big deal about making one yourself, I'll cover it today. I'm actually going to make a bigger one because I'm getting tons and tons and tons of hardware accumulating which hasn't got a home. So this is a 10 box high cabinet, I'm actually going to make a, I think it's 20, sorry 30 box cabinet which is twice the width but also a bit taller it's going to sit on a, the bench behind me where it's still accessible but it's out the way so as i said it's just basically four bits of mdf now the measurements i can give you the measurements but they are obviously specific to my particular size box now it depends on the sort of box you're going to use you can buy whatever size you want so the measurements i use here wouldn't necessarily be particularly relevant to you unless you bought the exact same plastic compartment box. Um, I'll put a link to the boxes in the description below if you want to get one or multiple boxes. Um, the supplier is a UK supplier, I'm not sure whether they'll, they'll deliver abroad but certainly if you're in the UK I can give you a link to this very easily. Um, so let's take a further zoom in look at the box. Zoom in a bit closer. So as you can see it's just basically two sides made from MDF and all I've done is I've stuck some little little wooden runners to the side of the the MDF obviously on both sides so that when the, the box slides in slides out there's a little bit of clearance above it to allow for easy sliding backs and forwards but it's really as simple as that I mean I'm going to go through each step with you now but a box with runners so like I say the size is dependent upon the box you actually use so you'll adjust the measurements that I use to fit your particular boxes so the only thing that's difficult not really difficult the only thing that requires a bit of calculation is the distance between the bottom runner and the underside of the top runner now obviously that needs to be enough to cater for the thickness of your particular box but also a little bit extra I've allowed an extra five millimeters which is about a quarter of an inch on top of that just to allow for clearance but I'd say the measurements aren't really that critical you can just do it by eye most of the time I think so I'll show you how I worked out the spacing and then we'll put together the carcass and then we put the back on and give it a good rub down with some sandpaper and that's basically all it requires. So we'll do that now. 
Right, so let's get started. So as I've said, I'm going to make a double width one. So as you can see on this one, you've got the left side with runners, you've got the right side with runners. So because I'm going to do two boxes wide, we're going to need a central piece which has runners on both sides. So it'll be a left piece, a central piece and a right piece. Now, I've already pre-cut the pieces, so I'll quickly show you each piece. Um, so we have, this is the MDF. I'm using 18 millimeter thick MDF, which is probably overkill, but it just happens to have, be what I had in the garage. So you can use whatever material you want, as long as it's reasonably thick and rigid. Um, nothing less than sort of, I would say, quarter inch, six, seven mil. But I've got some 18 mil MDF, so that's what I'm going to use. The original one is made from 18 mil MDF. But uh, like I say, any sort of wood. It's not important. So the measurements for this particular my my box because to fit my boxes are taken from the actual size of the box itself. So let's find a tape. So the depth of the box on this particular box, including allowing for the little bits that stick out and the hinges and things, is 230 millimeters which is uh, about nine inches so the sides the two sides and the central piece are cut to nine inches or 230 millimeters wide so i cut a long strip of that and then i personally want my box container to be the same height as my wooden backboards now if you're not Familiar, I use a wooden backboard around my workbench, which allows me to fix things to it, rather than having to screw holes into walls. Uh, I just use a big sheet of MDF, which I can fix tools, materials, die racks. Just screwed into the MDF, it saves a lot of faff. It means you can also move things around quite easily without damaging your walls. So, getting back, so I've got three pieces like this, which is 230 wide, 18 mil thick and the height is the same height for my purposes as my backboard but you can make those heights whatever you want obviously it depends on the number of boxes you're going to try and get into that particular space so um, you've got three of those we've got a top and a bottom piece which are again same width 230 mil or nine inches and as you can see look on the side camera, let's have a look. I've pre-drilled and countersunk the hole for the central piece and the same for the end pieces. So there's gonna be three uprights with a top screwed down and a bottom screwed up. So it's just a basic wooden box, very, very simple. If I can do it, you can certainly do it. <laughs> so that's the one, two, three, four, five pieces of wood and it's just a matter of basically fitting the runners, which is the only, not complicated, but bit that requires a bit of calculation. So the way I worked that out was quite simple. Um, if you take your box and you measure it, the thickness, the best way to do that is to put it onto a flat surface and then to take a rule, like so, and just measure from the ground to the top and then add say five millimeters, quarter of an inch or so, and that's the distance you need between the bottom runner and the, the space here. So the distance between here, I'll zoom in again so you've got a better view of that. The distance between the top of the bottom runner and the top of the next runner. Now that happens to be on this box I'll show you. Um, you can see that from so from this surface to this surface that is 55 millimeters now i've allowed an extra bit for the clearance so 55 between the top surface of the bottom runner and the next top surface of the runner above that so all you need to do then is take your side pieces and your central piece in my particular case and to mark out um, that distance 
on your piece of wood. Can you see that? I'll try and zoom in on the side, on their side camera. Just mark it out with a pencil, equally spaced along the piece of the side and the central piece. And then I'm just going to adjust the camera slightly. Just so you've got a better view of that. Okay, so you've got your side pieces marked out in this particular case 55 millimeters then we just take our little runners now this is just simply some pre-made uh, timber which you can buy from any sort of diy store just waiting for the atv to pass i live on a farm if you weren't aware of that we get farm vehicles passing regularly so it's a pain when you're recording video but at least you know about it so the wooden runners again they're the same width as the board you could make them slightly short if you wanted to but um, again the size isn't critical here it's just basically as long as it's wide enough for your box to sit on like so it doesn't have to be particularly wide or certain measurement just anything you can get from your local DIY store I think this is probably if you really want the measurements this is 12 millimeters by six millimeters but it really isn't important it's just a runner it's not going to be seen so once you've got put that out the way so cut them all to the same length work at how many you need so obviously it's two runners for each drawer that you want to put into your case and then just simply glue that onto the line that you've already marked on your, your sides. So I'm just going to use some regular wood glue. Uh, this is tight bond. It's a good quality glue. Um, if I can get the top off. <laughs> I have to come back. Right, I'm back. I've got the top open this time. So what I'm going to do is just run a bit of glue along the edge of the little bit of wood, little draw runner. Doesn't need to be a lot, but just run along. You can use a paintbrush if you want to, but it's not important. Just use your finger to spread it around evenly, and then just line the edge that the bottom of the um, the draw the box is going to slide against. We'll call that the top edge. Just line that up against the line, um, which is the front, which is the back. Gonna, this is the front of my cabinet, so I'm going to line up the edge of the, the drawer runner against that. Now just press it in place. Now, one bit of advice I'd give you here. If you're just going to be storing light objects like rivets and snap fasteners, gluing these on is perfectly adequate. As long as both surfaces are absorbent enough to sort of take the glue. If you use a shiny surface material like um, Conti board or something, the glue wouldn't stick to that very well. So because MDF is quite absorbent and natural wood is quite absorbent, there's not an issue there. The glue, the glue would bond both surfaces. But if you're going to be putting heavier objects, so really heavy hardware, nuts and bolts, heavy stuff like that, you may want to just add maybe one, two or three small screws just to hold those in position. But for the sort of thing I'm storing, it's not necessary. So I'll do one more. Again, just make sure that the, the top surface is on the right side of the line when you put them on. So we'll do one more and then I'll get on and do this off camera because it's quite a, a tedious task. But you find this sort of job, it's a bit of a pain to make it. But it's probably going to last you years, 10, 20, who knows. But it's a long-term investment, so it's definitely worth the effort. So I'll put the second one in. Just line it up, give it a bit of a switchy round. Switchy, is that a word? I'm not sure. But make sure it's firmly pressed in, and that'll bond nicely. And obviously, once you've got them all in position, just go over with a damp sponge and wipe off any excess glue. So I'll come back when I've finished all of these. Okay, I'm done. So I've, as you can see, on the side panels, I've glued on the little drawer runners 
I've done that for both the left and the right and the middle the middle panel as you can see has draw runners glued on both sides so the final task is to basically screw the carcass together so there's three uprights a top and a bottom and <clears throat> as you saw on the on the top I've just pre-drilled and countersunk the position for the end panel the middle panel and the other end panel I'm just going to plug that on top glue it and put screws in so I'm sure you can screw bits, two bits of wood together so I won't bother showing you that I'll show you the finished product in a moment okay as you can see we are basically done I have screwed together the five pieces of MDF uh, when you're putting it together make sure test it with one of your plastic drawers before the glue sets just to make sure that you've got all your measurements right and that's nothing sticking and once you've got to this stage I mean I did put some hardboard on the back that gives it some strength some stiffness um, make sure you glue the hardboard on as well as screw it that will make it nice and stiff but also check with this um, the right angle that your corners are square before you glue everything together and before things start to set otherwise it'll be all wonky and nothing will work properly so um, the final stage is just to go over it with a little sander it's quite rough at this stage so I'll, I'll get an electric sander on that and I'll put it in, in its position where it's going to go and I'll show you that next well there we go a new camera angle as well wow <laughs> so I think you'd agree the finished product is worth the effort it's a wonderful storage location now for all those small items which you just don't know where to put so you've got your snap fasteners your rivets your hardware your hinges your belt buckles your key rings all that stuff can go in these small trays organized if you like me you label everything i'll show you the machine i use to do that in a moment but uh, that's i think worth the effort personally so uh crack on make yourself one please don't ask me again where it comes from because i'm just showing you <laughs> okay so if you want to use the label machine to make your labels like I do for my trays I use this little device here it's the Brother P-Touch P700 I'll leave a link to it in the description below the video um, it comes with some nice free software you just basically type out the label you want and then click the print and then out pops your label So isn't that brilliant? You just peel off the backing, stick it to your box and you're done. So if you want to get the same type of label I use for my boxes, that's black on a white background, I use the, the 24mm cartridge. So again I'll leave a link in the description for the cartridges too. Okay so um, until next time don't forget to enter this month, that's April 2021's giveaway competition. Uh, you can do that online, sorry where are we over there? George Led, no it's over here isn't it, uh, where are we, uh, it's here somewhere, I'll point to it anyway, georgieleather.com for the giveaway and if you enjoyed this please leave a comment, let me know what you think, uh, a thumbs up is always welcome and if you're not a subscriber please subscribe, there's lots of benefits being a subscriber, so until next time, thanks for watching, bye bye.